We've got over a year's worth of data now to go through and hopefully back up the claim that we've had for a while now, our theory, that spending more on a solar system actually is more beneficial than getting a cheap off-the-shelf approach where everybody gets the same panel, the same inverter, no matter where you live and what your house is like. I did the cheap thing. I went for the off-the-shelf approach because, well, I didn't know what I knew now. And I'm just trying to basically say, don't make the mistakes I made. Because if there's one truth about solar arrays, is that when you're looking at how much you've generated, you always want more. It becomes an obsession. And the fact that I know I could get more from my roof, but I can't because of the decisions I made, and if I could go back in time would change, then it's, oh, that eats away at you. Given what Harry's done, he went for the tailored approach, I went for the off-the-shelf approach, do what he did, don't do what I did. Because ultimately, I wish I could, again, change what I've got on my system, and it will be there for the next 20, 25 years. The comparison I'm about to show you is far from scientific. It's given us a good enough guide to kind of back up this theory, but there are scenarios where the cheap system will be beneficial, and I'll come to this later on in the video. The whole point of this video is to say that a tailored approach for you, for your house, to account for all your variables is far better than just everybody getting the same thing. To use a terrible analogy, think of, well, imagine there's only one car that everybody has to buy. So everybody has the same car. It will work, it's transportation, but ultimately, wouldn't it be better if we had hundreds of different cars to choose from? Because then you could get one that's perfectly suited for you. We have lots of choice of cars, whereas with solar panels, some companies just literally give the same thing to everybody. Yes, you're going to end up paying more for that more tailored approach. And I don't just mean because they'll recommend maybe more expensive panels or more expensive inverters. I'm on about justifying why you should get more expensive panels or different types of panels or different types of inverters. You get what you pay for, ultimately. And knowledge is a big part of that. But it's not something that you can kind of see. It's not something that you get a shiny box from, is it? But system design is a lot more important than I think people give credit for in terms of solar arrays. If you're building an IT system, a network infrastructure is very much reliant on whoever designed it. But ultimately, again, people don't do that with solar arrays. So I am saying, maybe you should. So let me give you an example of a decision that Harry had to make, and it was specifically in this case about inverters. Forget the panels and all that, let, let us just concentrate on this. I'm not saying this is the only option in the solar industry, I'm saying these, this is the decision he had to make. So you've got three types of inverters that he was offered, a hybrid inverter, string inverter, or micro inverters. A hybrid inverter was pointless for him because he already had a home battery system which was AC coupled, so he didn't need a, an inverter that could fit a battery. He already had that, so forget the hybrid inverter. He decided to go for the more efficient, in his case, microinverters. There are cons to that. If something goes wrong with one of them, then someone's got to get on the roof 10 years from now to, to fix it. But that's what he chose to go down the route of. They then said, right, well, we've got two different models of microinverter. Which one do you, would, would you prefer? With their assistance, of course. It wasn't all his decision. But ultimately, it's that sort of option that I'm talking about with a tailored system. So what are the differences between these two microinverters? This is something I genuinely didn't realize at the time. And is again, just it might be unique to Harry. I'm not saying you will all have this. The panels he went for were 410 watt bifacial panels. That's the one they recommended. That's the one he went for. The two different microinverter options he had essentially were one of them could max that panel out. So effectively the microinverter could easily match the panel and in the brightest sunshine, then in theory, yes, you will get 410 watts from that solar panel. Whereas the other microinverter option he had, both of the same brand, it would stop at 350 watts. It wouldn't go any higher than that. So even though the panel can go to 410 watts, the inverter couldn't go any higher. Now, why would you do such a thing? What, what, what's the benefit to you? Well, ultimately the lower, if you will, microinverter had a lower startup voltage. That essentially means that an inverter won't do anything until it meets that minimum voltage, that minimum amount of sunlight. Until you hit that minimum voltage from the panels, and again, I'm simplifying this, then it will just sit there at zero watts until it meets that minimum and then it will, it will kick in, so to speak. So effectively, do you want something that's going to prioritize the lower end of generation or the higher end of generation? That's the decision he was making. 
We live in North Yorkshire. It's usually dull, grey, raining, as it is now. Uh, we get a few weeks of bright sunshine, so you would benefit from that few weeks. But over the entire year, I think I would rather benefit from generating more in dull weather than the bright sunshine. sunshine. And that's essentially what he chose. I just assumed it was, well, what wattage were the panels? Surely a 350 watt panel is the same as any other 350 watt panel. No, it isn't. Surely inverter A is the same as inverter B. Well, no, it can vary depending on what your usage, what, what your prioritizations are. This is the whole point of this video. I'm not comparing our systems from a technical perspective. I'm just using it to back up this claim. I'm saying that that tailored approach is clearly beneficial. It makes things more efficient and efficiency is very good, usually. This essentially is a full year's worth of generation from my array and Harry's array. I have 14 320 watt panels. Theoretically, I could max out at 4.48 kilowatts. Harry has eight 410 watt panels and theoretically he could maximize, he could max out at 3.28 kilowatts. So I have a 31% bigger array. I've got more real estate to play with essentially on my roof and I have a 30% bigger array. We both have east-west facing houses. We're both basically at the same elevation. There's a five foot difference in it. We live about three, four miles apart as the crow flies. It's as close as we could realistically get with a non-scientific experiment. And we didn't just buy these solar panels and spend thousands of pounds each to, to get a YouTube video out of it. This is just something that happened and we thought, oh, your way clearly seems to be better. But either way, I think we can all agree, can't we, that with a 30% bigger array, I should generate more than him. January. I generated just 3.4 kilowatt hours in January, which is awful. He got 66.5. That's not a huge amount, but compared to me, I remember, my array is much bigger. It's, it's worlds apart. February, I got 42, he got 109. March, I got 176 kilowatt hours, he got 288. Let's skip to winter again. December, I got 22, he got 51. November, I got 43, he got 93. And October, 139 for me, 191 for him. Even September's the same, he got slightly more than I did. So only once you get into the summer months where I can take advantage of that, because I can, I can hit my peak, that I generated more than him, but not by a lot. Look, 300 to 292, 389 to 348, 451 to 401. So when it's bright sunshine, I'm benefiting. He's losing out a little bit. When it's dull, he's benefiting. And I'm miles behind. For seven out of the 12 months, he's generating more than me. You look at the advert, don't you? Four kilowatt system with whatever inverter. And then you look at it, four kilowatt system with a different type of inverter. But that one's a thousand pound more. Well, I'll go for the cheap one. Don't just look at the wattage, which is what I did. That's the biggest take home from this. Look at the whole system. And that's where the tailored approach often is more expensive, but a lot better. That's, that's what I'm trying to get across here. Of course, he's got better panels, but given I've got so many more of them, I should at least match, if not beat him, every day of the month, every month of the year. He generated 2,839 kilowatt hours over the entire 12 months and I generated 2,582 kilowatt hours over the same 12 month period. And yet my array is 30 odd percent bigger. And that for me is evidence that his system is tailored to this environment way more than mine. Now you might think, well, of course, if you spend more on panels, you're gonna get more generation. But there has to be a justification behind it so he has a different panel to my brother who's down south with a south facing roof, for example. The inverter will obviously make a significant difference on that as well. And um, ultimately those decisions and sub decisions of decisions have paid off. So how much extra did he pay? Well, there's no point in comparing it to mine because I have a much bigger array and it was done a couple of years before his, but it was a 1500 pounds difference between an off the shelf version so eight panels for him compared to the one he ended up with. The only real way we'd know is if we either give me a better system or him a worse system. 
That's the only real way we'll know the difference in generation. However, we can predict it, which is what I try to do here. So 2,582 kilowatt hours is what I did in a year. 2,839 is what he has done. I have 14 panels, he has eight panels, which means I'm at 184.4 kilowatt hours per panel on my roof. He's done 354.9 kilowatt hours per panel on his roof with his system. Yes, there should be a discrepancy. His panels are bigger and of course, 410 watts versus 320 watt, 22% smaller my panels are compared to his. However, he has generated 92.5% more per panel than mine. It's not just a case of he's got a high wattage panel. The inverters played a massive difference. The panels have, are part of that. They have made a difference as well. So what I've done now is essentially go, okay, let's take my per panel generation, times that by eight, and then we come to 1,475 kilowatt hours that he in theory would have generated had he gone for the cheaper system. But he would have saved 1,500 pounds by doing so because that's how much cheaper it was. So he has generated 2839, but in this theoretical scenario is only generated 1475 which means there's a difference of 1,364 kilowatt hours between this one and this one. And at 26 pence per kilowatt hour as the average UK price right now, he's in theory lost or wouldn't have generated and saved 355 pounds per year by having the cheaper system versus the more expensive system. Given the fact it was 1,500 pounds more expensive to get the system he ended up with, then you're looking at just over four years to get your money back, so to speak. And after that, for the life of the panels, well, you just win, win, win. So again, more evidence that buying the more expensive panels with a tailored system and inverter is clearly better. Now he got his system designed by Heatable. This video is sponsored by Heatable. You might think, well, of course, it's going to be better. They're sponsoring the channel. You're a shill. He bought his system before this discussion started. In fact, him buying the system and working with Heatable is how I got in conversation with them. So he's a customer of theirs. He can say, using his own money, putting his money where his mouth is, so to speak, that he would recommend Heatable. And as a byproduct of that, so would I. They have then gone on to do my brother's solar array, that's in the channel if you want to know more about the details of that one. That essentially is the same company with different panels to Harry and a different inverter type as well. Now, don't get me wrong. You might get a cheap system that just happens to be the perfect fit for you. And if I look at it from a different perspective, if you know you're not gonna be in this house for more than, I don't know, five years or so, then you're probably better on just getting the cheaper system. I'm not knocking the cheap fire and forget it installers out there that basically just throw it on your roof and disappear. That's what I did. I was happy with the install because it was cheap. I just, I would have probably waited another six, 12 months to save up more and then ultimately get a better system. Because again, it becomes an obsession to this solar thing and generation. You want more. Again, I want to thank Heatable for sponsoring this video. So if you are looking for an array, heatable.co.uk, it's pretty much all online. The initial contact, tell them what you've got and they'll get back to you with a quote and then they will tailor it more when you get further down the line. Essentially, again, Harry, as an actual customer of theirs, long before this sponsor ever started, he can say that he can absolutely recommend them. Trustpilot, all the things that people look at, just have a look on there and if they're happy, he's happy, my brother's happy with his system that Heatable installed, then I've done as much due diligence as I can on a sponsor. I hope this makes sense. This is a basic comparison, non-scientific, as I said, that for me shows a pattern, a clear pattern, that at least in Yorkshire, I guess, having a system that's taking advantage of lower light is a much more beneficial thing than having a system that's designed for the peak few months. I am not a solar expert by any means. Batteries, absolutely. I could talk to you about them any day of the week. Solar systems, that's why you need to listen to your installer. And that's why I would get at least three quotes. Cheap, off the shelf, fixed price sort of quote, and then a couple of what I'd call more tailored approaches, like Heatable, for example. I always get three quotes for anything that you're spending a lot of money on, especially when it's up there for 20, 25 years. Right, thanks for watching guys. Uh, if you want to help the channel out, then just put a comment in. In fact, any video or channel that you like, 
stick a comment in, click a like and subscribe, which is why we all say the same thing. If you really want to help the channel out, then become a member for 99p a month. You can pay more if you wish, but essentially 99p a month gets videos on Sunday instead of Friday. And don't forget about driving home the podcast, the link to which is in the description of every video and in all the usual podcasty places. Oh, I'm on Instagram now. I've started Instagramming. I don't know how to use it, but if you are on Instagram, then um, at EVManUK. I am putting stuff on there ahead. So stuff like this and the cars I've bought are on Instagram first. Just a little glimpse, not the videos. I'm starting to build up my social media empire. So anyway, thanks for watching. That's the sales pitch done for my channel. I'll see you soon.